Hello everyone, today I'll be making a final update video on my Sanyo Decord, that's the model VTC8400 machine. I bought this machine, uh, it's been a while now, it's probably been five months now. Uh, I paid $500, uh, $300 for that machine. Um, I was able to get it working. I actually have two machines right now. I have this one, which is the 8400, and I also have the older machine, which is the 8200 model. Now that 8200 model machine, I have not been able to get it up and running. I'm still working on it. But the good thing is that I was able to make this guy work. Now this guy, I had to change the belt. That's, that right here is the capstan belt. I bought this uh, online. I actually purchased two. Uh, one for that machine right there and another one for my older machine. I actually removed it so I can kind of show you. Uh, this is a brand new belt. This was a replacement for the original belt, which was a 1976 belt. That belt was very old. It was uh, almost 45 years old. So yeah, it was, uh, it fell apart. It pretty much turned into sand, pretty much. You pretty much touched it and it fell apart. Uh, I bought this via the online, online Elliott Electronic Supply, and that is the model FBM 9.4. So if for any reason you have one of these older machines, that would be the Sanyo or the Toshiba. I know they also made Toshiba branded V Core 2 machines. Uh, I'll let you know it, uh, the belt for the capstan at least is the model FBM 9.4. So I bought a 12 2 that came in this little envelope here. And I also went ahead and I changed the play and rewind belt. That belt is a round belt. As you can see right here, that belt is sort of, it sort of has like an egg shape to it. And that's not very good. When you have a belt that it's, it's still intact. It hasn't fallen apart. It's pretty strong, rigid. But since it does have that kind of a egg shape to it, you will not get proper playback speed. This will create what you call wow. That's, that's the name to give that uh, effect. In the tape head forum, that's a magnetic recordable tape forum. Uh, so yeah, I removed this belt. This belt had been stationary since this machine was made. This machine had zero hours of playtime, which is incredible to know. So that belt had never been spun since it was manufactured back in 1976. So yeah, I had to get rid of this belt and I replaced it for a brand new one. As you can tell, this brand new one has a nice round shape to it which is what you want. You want a nice uh, uniform shape to it. That way you don't, you don't get any, any kind of a speed ups and slow downs, stuff like that. Uh, that would create tracking issues, which I was able to fix on this machine. I actually played it with the original playback slash forward slash rewind belt, and I was getting dropped frames. Every, uh, every couple seconds, you would get like a black, frame that it was pretty no noticeable so yeah i got this machine up and running and uh let me go ahead and uh, remove the cover so I, I really want you to see how this machine works and i also want you to hear how it works it's very loud uh let me go ahead and uh, take off the cover so you can kind of see the innards all right it's very easy to get in here it actually only has two screws which helps a lot if you own any of these older machines, I really recommend you do regular maintenance. For example, this machine has officially, I don't know, about four hours of runtime. Believe it or not, in those four hours of runtime, which is not a lot, I mean, four hours is pretty much just two, two movies or so, two hour long movies. Let me show you, uh, this is a uh, cleaning, tip for video heads and I don't know if you can see that from this video it, it it's pretty dirty I mean I had to clean the video heads after four hours of runtime and look at that that used to be nice and white but now it is dirty so that's what's 
what came off of the video heads on this machine. So I really recommend you, you maintain these older machines often, as often as you can. Um, one of the reasons this, uh, this machine uh, creates so much, uh, it needs so much maintenance is because the actual tapes, the media it records onto, it is actually a cobalt dope tape which it's not the worst thing you'll find. You'll find other formats that were made around this time that use a lot worse formulation than this. But still, this is not the best formulation there was at the time. The best was the, the metal type. The metal type tape, I'm talking about the actual ribbon in here. It does not create as much uh, wear and tear uh, as this cobalt dope tape. Uh, but it's, it's, it's pretty good. I actually own uh, two um, Quasar VX, the R1000 machines, and those machines, they create a lot of uh, wear and tear. You have to pretty much clean them after every single playback. I mean, you have to. But I, I'll tell you right now, regarding this V-Core 2 machines, I recommend you clean them after four hours, which is insane. I mean... If you own a Blu-ray player or something like that, which is pretty modern, you really don't have to <laughs> maintain them every four hours. I mean, uh, uh, but it, it's the beauty of these old things, uh, having to maintain them. So believe it or not, I have a recording on this tape right here. It's a 10 minute long recording. It's a recording that I've done in the past. The reason I do this recording is because they give you an option to share that on YouTube as long as you give credit, what credit is due. This is actually the Big Buck Bunny computer animated film. It has a Creative Commons license for it. So let me go ahead and turn on that machine and I'll put this video in and you can actually see it on my screen right there. That's uh, I love that screen because it is 43 aspect ratio. As you can tell this is not widescreen which is compatible with these older machines which I really love collecting. And you know what right now you'll find so many machines if you really want to start collecting right now, it's a perfect time to start because you'll, you'll find the lowest prices as well as, as well as the largest amount of availability. So like, let me go ahead and turn that machine on. It's very loud. I want you to hear the actuators, how loud they are. They always turn on when you turn on this machine. There you go. That's an actuator that went on. So let me go ahead and eject this. Yeah, that's very, very loud right there. Uh, let me put this tape in here. Uh, by the way, this is the uh, two hour long tape. I know that they, they did make one hour length. I happen to be able to find a total of 12 of these via eBay. Um, before I put this in here, I gotta let you know, if you own these older tapes, there is a chance, especially during initial playback, the leader, uh, what the leader is, it's that clear, transparent ribbon that's in here. It'll separate from the actual magnetic ribbon. That's, uh, it, it happens. It actually happened to me once already uh, with this tape right here. I had to repair it. I had to open it up. It has a total of six screws, Phillips screws, number one type. Number one size, that's a one, two, three, four, five, six screws. Remove those uh, six screws and you can get into these guys and you have to repair that splice. They call it a splice. So what I use is, is your regular old Scotch brand tape. I know that there is proper um, splice repair tape out there. You'll find it on eBay and Amazon. I just went ahead and used scotch. I've used this many times and I've never had one fall apart on me. Uh, so yeah, I used scotch tape to repair the leader that fell apart on this tape right here. Well, let me go ahead and put this in here. All right, so it goes in like so. You close it up like that. I actually made this recording using the standard speed that's the STB what they call it that would only give you one hour the reason I did this is because I really want to show you the quality the maximum quality that you'll get out of this machine 
also I use, let me kind of show you right here. What I use for the output, I did not use the coaxial because I know you will get a lower resolution when you use the coaxial video. I use the RCA composite. Now initially this machine does not have RCA connections. I had to use adapters that converted from the, I believe they call this UHF connector. It converts it to the RCA type, as you can see right there, RCA type. Oh, I love the Monster Cable brand. I know that they're not the best quality, but I love knowing that I used to use these back when I was a teenager. And you'll find them, they're, they're inexpensive now. They, I mean, they've dropped a lot. Uh, their prices have dropped a lot since they were first released. So I use the RCA video, a composite. And I use, uh, it, this is only mono, it only records in mono audio. So I only have one audio out coming out of this machine into my monitor here. So let me go ahead and, because uh, I, I really want to show you how this machine works. Okay, so that machine is on. Let me go ahead and press play. And you'll actually see the um, spooling mechanism work right here. I actually had to uh, maintain this machine. Let me kind of show you. I've actually showed you in detail in my other videos. Just in case you haven't seen those videos. Uh, let me kind of, just kind of sh quickly show you what products I use to maintain this machine. Because I really, really need to maintain these machines before you start using them. I really recommend you maintain these machines. Uh, and then we start with the, with the oil. I use the liquid bearings right there. I use these on the capstan as well as the motor bearings. Believe it or not, motor bearings still require maintenance. You want to put uh, maybe one or two drops of this. This is 100% synthetic, which is great. It'll last the longest. So that's what I use for all of the bearings. Now for the switches, I use the Oxid Fader F5. Uh, there's uh, many switches on this machine. Especially older machines. Older machines have a lot of switches. Newer machines, everything's pretty much uh, touch screen. They don't really need maintenance like this older stuff. And for all of the the metal on metal movement parts, I use the Super Loop, which is synthetic grease. And I like the fact that it has Teflon. It really helps. It helps to clean the Teflon. So this is a Super Loop company. I use yeah, I use this on the metal on metal parts. And for the plastic on plastic parts, I use silicone grease. As you can see right there, it's silicone grease. I love silicone because it does not degrade plastic parts. So this machine um, is working nice and smooth now. Um, but still, I mean, the design of this machine, it, it really struggles a lot. I mean, it's one of the reasons why it failed. So let me go ahead and uh, press play on this machine. There you go, you can see the uh, screen next to it's looking right there, and the, the tape's moving now. And uh, you'll see my video right there. There we go. Uh, yeah, I was very happy to know that I was able to fix the, the drop frames. I was getting a lot, a lot of drop frames on this machine. Uh, like I said, because of, of this egg-shaped belt. If you have a machine that's doing something similar, I really recommend you check the belts. If you have any kind of uh, X shape like that, I recommend you swap that out for a new belt. Uh, so as you can see, if, if I had to kind of guess what kind of resolution is coming out of this machine, I would say it's uh, it's pretty much VHS. I mean, that, that's pretty much what it is. And uh, VHS was available around this time, which was, it was 1976. You did have VHS, which was the, uh, it pretty much won. VHS kept going. This v Core 2 format right here, it pretty much failed. They stopped making it. It only lasted maybe three or four years. Um, now, I see other videos on YouTube regarding this format right here, which is a v Core 2. And I've compared the video quality that I, I'm getting out of this machine compared to other videos on YouTube. And I gotta tell you, I have not seen another machine with a better quality that's coming out. I mean, this is this is 45 years old. This is from 1976. So it's a very old machine. And uh, believe it or not, 
I have not changed any of the capacitors. All of the capacitors on this machine are the stock original ones. They're still working. They're probably not in the best shape, but they're working great. Uh, if for any reason they get they go bad in the future, I know how to fix them. I know how to test them as well. I have a inline tester, which is great. That means you don't have to actually move the capacitors to test them. You can just kind of leave them where they are and you can check the resistance on them and find out if they need replacement or not. Uh, so believe it or not, this machine has its original capacitors. Now, I gotta give credit to the fact that this machine was uh, mint quality. It had zero hours when I purchased it. Um, now my older 8200 machine, uh, that machine is very used. Uh, you can tell it's very scratched. It's very worn out. Uh, I'm, very, I'm a very happy owner of this machine right here. I will be using this machine quite a bit. I have 12 tapes set. I will be recording in the LP mode because that will give you two hours of recording time per tape. For this recording, I use the standard speed, which uh, it only gave you one hour, but I really wanted to show you the maximum resolution you can get out of this machine. For example, you'll find a lot of websites online, wonderful websites. For example, Lab Guys World, um, showing images of this machine but you won't be able to see them in, in, in action. How they work. How they sound. It's wonderful. I've only been collecting for the past four years. When I first saw this machine, I, I hoped to one day own one. And after four years, I was kind of losing hope. I was thinking, okay, I think I'm never going to find one because they're incredibly rare. So I'm very happy to own this machine. And I'm also very happy to show you this machine. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's other collectors that you'll never get a chance to see these machines. I actually found out that this is a... Um, it's... It was actually used for video presentations, for business. It's a business class machine. This machine was uh, transported into offices and they showed video demonstrations of products that they wanted to sell to new uh, companies, uh, which is wonderful to know. Um, yeah, that's, that, that's a very good video that you're, I'm getting out of this machine. Um, I actually used, let me kind of show you how I was able to record something so modern into this old format. I actually went online and I looked for a, an HDMI to composite adapter. That's what they call this kind of uh, video out, but this machine uses. Now this is from the Hall Research Company and it works great. I love the fact that this adapter here has many settings on it. Not only does it output um, the NTSC standard, which is normal here in the USA. I don't know where it is you live, you the viewer, uh, but at least where I live in the USA, they use NTSC. Now I do own European machines and I do use this adapter for those machines because this does output in the PAL standard. That would be to 25 frames per second. Right now, I recorded this video right here using NTSC, which is 29.97 frames per second. So I really recommend this adapter right here. You'll find it online, not too expensive, and it works great. And, uh... I mean, as this video is kind of playing right here, let me kind of let you know the availability right now. It's, it's, it's unreal. Let me kind of show you what I was able to find recently. Okay, I don't know, I'm not sure you're familiar with this format right here. This is the Quasar VX format. Right now, you'll find on eBay a seller that was selling a total of 54 of these tapes, which is unreal. I mean, how are you able to find 
a seller nowadays, in this day and age, 2021, that's selling something so rare and old like this. Uh, let me kind of just quickly show you. Um, I mean, just in case you're not familiar with this format, uh, let me kind of show you a one of these. Now these are all used, which is great to know. I love the fact that they're used because I want really want to see what's on these. I plan to transfer these videos into a digital format. Okay, so we have the uh, the huge tape right here. I mean, compared to a Vcor two, Vcor two works a lot smaller. Uh, this records two hours. Um, and look at the, the condition of these. It has the original shipping blocks. When you purchased these machines back in the uh, 1975, they came with the ship, shipping blocks. That way these, uh, these reels will not spin during transportation. And uh, look at this, these are intact. Look at this paper, this paper is so old and it's intact. Let me kind of show you something that I had never seen. I've been collecting this format for a long time, for the past four years. I had never seen this insert right here. This insert right here, I mean, you won't find this. I have never seen this right here and I'm very happy owner of it. I only own one of these. I own quite a few tapes here, but I only own one of the inserts for this, uh, these tapes right here. Okay, so the, the video is pretty much almost over. I'll be pressing stop pretty soon. Um, just in case you think this is like a trick and I'm, this is not actually coming out of this machine. Let me go ahead and press pause right here. Okay, so that's the pause. Uh, it doesn't look very nice. I mean, later machines, that would be like the VHS and the beta machines. They had better pause quality. For example, you wouldn't see this kind of frame right here. This machine actually has a uh, frame by frame option, which uh, let me kind of go ahead and demonstrate right there. That's kind of slow. I mean, it looks awful to tell you the truth. Look, I don't plan on using this setting, especially knowing that this uh, this format is very prone to wear and tear. I, I really recommend you try not to use the either pause or slow playback like this as much as possible because uh, like I said, this format is very prone to wear and tear. So let me kind of stop that. That's not really nice with the tape. So I, I just really want to let you know that th this is in fact coming out of this machine. I'm not, I'm not making like a trick or anything. Um, let me go ahead and press stop. See, it's uh, loading the tape back. Let me go ahead and press play again. very noisy transport system right there as you as you notice it took a long time to get a, a video it takes a couple seconds um i know vhs machines they work a lot faster than this right here this takes about two or three seconds to get a video signal out of it so let me have a press stop right here Yeah, this machine, I mean, compared to how it used to work when I first purchased it, it's a lot better now. It's a, it's a very happy machine. Now, I got to tell you, I've noticed that uh, none of the parts get really hot. I mean, when I purchased the machine, I was expecting for it to get really hot. Because you know what? These machines are not very uh, efficient. For example, this machine right here. It says it consumes a total of 31 watts. I mean, compared to a Blu-ray player, that's not very efficient. Um, it actually has a removal cord, which I really like. Let me go ahead and I'll put this machine aside and kind of show you something else that I've been collecting lately. And, uh, just in case you also collect this format, I kind of want to let you know. The availability has become very great right now. Right now it's a very good time to start collecting vintage formats. Let me kind of put my monitor away. I love this monitor. I bought this monitor, uh, it's been a year now. It works great. 
It's an industrial grade monitor. It's made for 24 seven playback. Put that aside. Okay, these are my V core two tapes. I have a total of 12. Let me put those aside. Press. All right. Now, I have been collecting the European, that's the Video 2000 format. And I love the looks of this format. It, it, it's kind of like a blend of uh, VHS with audio cassettes because of the fact that after you're done with one side, you have to flip them around. Now, I was able to find a seller, believe it or not, one seller on eBay was selling a total of 54 of these tapes, which is insane. When are you going to find a seller selling so many uh, tapes regarding this very old format? Um, I have quite a few uh, brands here. I mostly have the BASF, which uh, was a very good quality company. That Not only did they make video tape, they also made audio tape. They've made very good audio tape. Uh, let me kind of quickly show you. I have this right here. This is the, uh, the Philips branded Video 2000 tape. Um, this is the PD Magnetics branded, which is a sister company of DuPont right there. Uh, this is the 480 minute maximum time. Um, which is mostly what I have. I, some of, I have some of the 360, but I have mostly the 480 because I really want to be able to record as much time on these as I can. And right here we have the, the Siemens branded Video 2000 format tape right here. Now all of these, like I said, they are used, which uh, is wonderful to know. I've actually played some of these. Some, some of these have very nice 80s movies like Rambo, like Alien, like uh, like Porky's, stuff like that, 80s stuff. I love it. Um, this is the BASF 480. Um, and this right here is also a BASF 480. But I, I really love how these these tapes look like look at these stickers look at these wonderful colors this is something you won't find on uh, something modern modern like nowadays especially since the physical format is pretty much disappearing so i love owning these right here and like i said right now the availability is very high and the prices are very low for example you will be able to find a video 2000 machine for as low as 300 dollars which is which is pretty much impossible to find um, about a year ago. You will not find a machine for that price. Now, let me kind of show you something else that I was able to find on eBay, which I also have started collecting. Now, this format is from 1973. It is a color video format right here. It is the, uh, this format actually has uh, quite a few names. Um, they did call it the Omnivision format, but it was also called the EIAJ2 format. And it was made by uh, quite a few companies, uh, by Panasonic, obviously, right here it says Panasonic. It was also made by National, which I believe was a sister company of Panasonic. And it was also made by Hitachi. Hitachi also made machines regarding this format. Uh, I have the 30-minute uh, the ones. I also have the 20-minute ones. Um, these are all Panasonic branded. I also have the Scotch. Scotch also made these tapes and I, I still don't have any of the Hitachi. You'll actually find brand new sealed Hitachi tapes on eBay right now. They're expensive. They're about $60 each and I do plan on buying those. Um, this format is incredibly advanced. I mean, this is from 1973. 
But around 1973, you also had another format called the Cartrivision format, which is was pretty much this size right here. But the machines that you had to own in order to play a Cartrivision format tape were insanely huge. They were pretty much the size of a dishwasher. I'm not kidding. You'll find images of um, Cartrivision machines and they were insanely huge. Now, I actually don't own a machine that places this uh, taste right now. Um, it's, they're on my eBay list. I do have hopes of finding one, uh, especially right now. Like I said, the availability of older machines right now is very high. Um, so that, those machines, there's quite a few machines that were made. They're on my list. They're on my eBay list. So someday I want to be able to show you what, what's on these tapes right here. So this is another format that I have started collecting. And uh, I guess that's it for my kind of update on the my Decor 2 format machines right here. Uh, let me kind of paste this right here on top of these uh, Panasonic Omnivision, also known as EIAJ2 format right there. This format was invented in 1976. This format was invented in 1973. And I love owning these. I do plan on recording uh, wonderful 80s horror and sci-fi movies on these guys. That would be a very neat project. I mean, at least for me. I still love recording onto magnetic tape. And I own many re uh, magnetic tapes. And I gotta tell you, I have never encountered a tape with mold. I know a lot of people, t uh, they kind of tell you, oh, don't don't collect that format. You'll, you'll find tapes with mold. You're going to have to bake them before you stop playing them. Now, I have, I have many of these tapes right here. I also own many of these tapes as well. And I have not seen them shedding. Or, or having the need to bake, for example. I mean, maybe I'm the luckiest guy in the world and I haven't encountered such a tape, but so far I have not found the need to bake any of these tapes. They work great as is. Uh, so I really welcome your questions regarding any of these formats or any of these tapes right here. And uh, I'm very happy to make this. I actually wanted to make this video for quite a long time, but I didn't really have time. I was, I've been so busy at work. I work in the electrical field and you know what? Electrical field, it's considered essential. So even though we are living through some uh, pretty crazy times right now, it, the electrical fuel is still going. I mean, people, they still need electricity. They still need repairs. They still need upgrades. So I've been, sink, I mean, more busy than ever before. So I'm actually making this video in, on my winter break. I'm not working right now. So I actually had time to finally show you the video output on this format, which I'm very happy to own. Uh, like I told you, I thought I was never going to be able to own a machine regarding this format and I actually own two right now like I said one is in uh it's not a hundred percent working order like I like I like maybe you were able to tell on my video that you just saw the work uh, very minimal very minimal artifacts that were kind of like these black colored artifacts that would move back and forth horizontally but I mean considering the fact that the, the age of the machine the fact that it's 40 45 years old and also the fact that it only cost me $300 and the fact that I only, um, I only use about $20 worth of belts. These belts right here, I bought a total of four belts, the two flat belts and two round belts. That was only like about $20. I mean, considering the fact that the machine only cost me $300 and the fact that I only invested about $20 in belt it's incredible I mean uh, so I welcome all your any of your questions 
And uh, I gotta tell you, I love making these videos and I'll make, I'll make a lot more. I mean, I'm gonna make as many videos as I can regarding uh, mostly the color. For example, this format right here, believe it or not, it is in color. It does record in color. If this format only recorded in black and white, I would not even collect it. I don't really like collecting video formats that only record in black and white. I really love the color ones, especially because I was born in 1982, so I was pretty much born in the color era. I never really used the black and white machines. Um, I gotta let you know, you'll never find any commercials on my videos. And um, I always try my best. I mean, I know my videos, they're not, they're not like the, the highest quality or the, the highest, uh, for example, I don't have any sponsors or anything like that. I just, I really want to help people. For example, if you're a collector yourself and you repair old machines, I really hope I I help you with my videos. I mean, that's that's pretty much why I'm making these videos. I really want to help people and I don't want to discourage you um, in starting collecting these machines. I don't want to do that. I don't want to scare you. I want to let you know that nothing is impossible if you have the time, if you have the patience. You'll get these machines up and running, and it's a wonderful feeling when you get a machine that's so old. This machine is 45 years old. It's way older than me, and I got it working. It's, it's amazing, and I got to tell you, I'm not an expert. I've only been doing this for about four years. I pretty much use my uh, common knowledge regarding VHS machines, and that's what I pretty much use on these machines, and um, it's been wonderful. So thank you so much.